So we have some new agents that are currently being looked at in refractory extensive state small cell. One of those is lorbenectidin, uh, which is an interesting molecule. It's actually a, a murine-based uh, synthetic quinolone, which is an anti-tumor uh, agent. It actually uh, inhibits uh, active transcription. Uh, and we know that small cell is, is quite addicted to transcriptional activation. So this makes this a ripe fit or a good fit for, for small cell cell. Uh, and, and what we've learned about lerbinectin, it has just been recently presented in a single arm phase two trial of roughly a hundred extensive stage small cell lung cancer patients. It was tested as a single agent. Uh, and interestingly, what we saw is outcomes that we really haven't seen in a refractory setting, outcomes we haven't seen for patients uh, uh, um, receiving a drug as a second line drug. We saw a response rate of roughly 35% in all patients, a PFS of four months, and a median OS of nine months, which is quite incredible as they're measuring the time uh, of start at the time of receipt of second line drug uh, to death. So this has really pushed the envelope. Uh, and interestingly, while this is a single arm study, they did sort out patients who were either platinum sensitive or platinum refractory. And we saw very different outcomes based on whether patients who initially received platinum atopicide were sensitive or refractory. Uh, in the platinum sensitive uh, group, um, we saw a response rate of 45%. We saw a PFS roughly around four to five months and a median overall survival of 12 months. And so that's quite different than the platinum refractory group where the response rate was around 20%, the PFS around two months, and the median overall survival of five months. Still favorable outcome. Outcomes. But when you look at a median overall survival time of 12 months and a, as a second line drug, that's pretty interesting. That's, that's, that's certainly, I think, moving the needle significantly. So I think there's a lot of excitement around lubronectidin. I think that uh, we, I'm, I'm really anxious to get my hands on this drug and use it for our patients. We have to think about what we have currently. We have topotecan with a response rate of around 15%. Um, you know, this is really doubling or coming close to doubling that, at least in the, in the platinum sensitive patients. We will have a study, a uh, phase three study called Atlantis, uh, that is essentially comparing uh, lubronectin in, in combination with chemotherapy, uh, I believe doxorubicin, uh, versus uh, topotecan. So we'll have a definitive phase three trial that is looking at this agent compared to topotecan, which I hope will show an improvement in outcome in all three measures, response rate, PFS, and OS. I'd be surprised if it didn't. The drug is reasonably well tolerated. There are some cytopenia. And, and, and some GI uh, side effects that we need to be mindful of, but overall, a very exciting drug and a welcome change uh, on the heels of immunotherapy coming first line, this agent coming potentially second line, I think will really push the envelope in improving outcomes for patients with extensive stage small cell lung cancer. Lerbinectidin was a relatively well-tolerated drug. If we review its safety tolerability and safety profile, the primary toxicity is hemologic in nature. Mostly grade three or higher adverse events were related to myelosuppression, about 40% of patients receiving uh, high-grade neutropenia. This is primarily reversible. Uh, often these are paper toxicities, which patients are often unaware of uh, and may be able to manage using prophylaxis. In the randomized phase three Atlantis trial, uh, when we see those results, we'll have to remember that the toxicity profile from that trial will be from a combination of lerbinectidin and doxorubicin. And so many of those toxicities may be attributed to the anthracycline. Uh, however, in practice, uh, lerbinectidin monotherapy uh, generally is a, a very well-tolerated drug.